By any measure, the President of the United States' official state aircraft is an impressive piece of kit. Not only is Air Force One tricked out with all the latest defensive gizmos, it also performs as a flying embassy, pampering eminent guests and projecting American confidence and authority around the world. But what actually goes down inside that world-famous fuselage? Today, we're taking to the skies and finding out what makes Air Force One special. Before we go any further, it's important to understand something very basic. Air Force One isn't technically an aircraft at all. Air Force One is an air traffic control call sign, denoting any aircraft that happens to have a sitting president on board at the time. Usually, this is the familiar blue and white jet we've all seen on TV a hundred times. It's crucial to stress, however, that when that same plane jets off later that day without the president, it's no longer Air Force One. This quirk of nomenclature was brought home painfully to Richard Nixon after his resignation in 1974. At the exact same moment his successor, Gerald Ford, was being sworn into office, Nixon's mid-air flight to California was unceremoniously downgraded from Air Force One to plain old SAM-2700. Dwight Eisenhower was the first president to enjoy the use of the iconic call sign. Air Force One was first coined after a hairy moment in 1953 when air traffic controllers couldn't distinguish between the president's Lockheed Constellation and a nearby commercial plane that happened to be using an identical flight number. But it was President John F. Kennedy who did most to craft our modern notion of what Air Force One actually is. JFK's savvy instinct for political theater inspired him to propose a kind of flying White House. A specifically modified Boeing 707 was promptly commissioned. Kennedy's glamorous wife Jackie is most often credited with overseeing the classic blue and white livery and chic interiors we all know and love. What's less well known is that the French-born designer Raymond Louis, who also designed the classic Coke bottle and cigarette boxes for Lucky Strike, was heavily involved too. Louis based the grandiose all-caps United States of America logo on the fuselage upon the Caslon typeface, which he had recently seen used to great effect on an original copy of the US Declaration of Independence. President Kennedy loved Air Force One, referring to it as his baby, but tragedy was soon to strike. In November 1963, Air Force One ferried Kennedy to its final engagement, a motorcade through the city of Dallas during which he was brutally assassinated. In the immediate aftermath, Kennedy's Boeing 707 bore the painful duty of carrying the president's body home. On that same flight, Kennedy's successor, Lyndon Johnson, was sworn into office, documented in this haunting photograph, hand on Bible, standing next to a grieving Jackie Kennedy. Air Force One's role in such historic moments, of course, make it very special indeed. But it isn't all heavyweight drama. Some presidents have even managed to inject some fun into the Air Force One story. Take Gerald Ford, for instance. Every inch a man of the people, Ford was a huge fan of Coors beer. In those days, Coors was only available in a handful of states out west, so whenever Ford flew that way on presidential business, he'd insist staff stock up Air Force One with crates of his beloved Coors, so he'd have a stash to enjoy back home at the White House. Somewhat more innocently, in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan kept jars of jelly beans on board Air Force One. Reagan can also be seen in photographs practicing his golf game across a miniature in-flight putting green. Looking ahead to today, the Air Force One we know and love is a jumbo jet, right? Wrong. It's actually two identical jumbo jets. Twin Boeing 747-200Bs, bearing tail numbers 28000 and 29000 respectively, share the job, ensuring there's always a backup in case of emergency. And although these mighty aircraft might look superficially like the one that you used to go on vacation, they're actually quite different animals underneath. For one, they're almost entirely self-sufficient. Air Force One 747s have their own fold-out staircases and even their own baggage loading machinery, keeping interaction with potentially suspicious ground crews to a minimum. They can also refuel in mid-air and so technically remain airborne indefinitely if a crisis crops up. Air Force One's 26-strong regular crew are vetted to the highest military standards, but once established on the job, enjoy a rare intimacy and familiarity with the Commander-in-Chief. As such, President's final flights are famously emotional affairs. The food available on board is somewhat better than your average humdrum airline fare. Two kitchens, each boasting their own $12 million refrigerator, are capable of producing gourmet standard grub for up to 100 people at a time. Enough food for 2,000 meals is kept on the plane, always, just in case, with supplies sourced by crew members wearing disguise at randomly selected grocery stores to prevent potential poisoning or other similar skullduggery. If the worst should happen and the president gets sick, Air Force One is kitted out with an advanced onboard medical facility, complete with fold-out operating table, fully stocked pharmacy and a doctor on call 24-7. Vital stocks of blood matching the commander-in-chief's blood type are also stashed aboard. Naturally, the White House of the Skies has some decent communications gear on board. No begging the stewardess for Wi-Fi access here. There's reputed to be 85 separate secure phone lines, supplemented by a number of two-way radios and even a fax machine. Well, you never know. 
As many as 19 television sets, reportedly costing several thousands of dollars apiece, and ultra-fast internet keep the president and his staff in constant contact with the ground. Some 238 miles of internal wiring, about twice as much as a regular 747, keep the lights on no matter what. As you might expect, Air Force One is also kitted out with the latest defensive technology. Its heavy shielding armor can help it withstand much of the fallout from a nuclear detonation, while gizmos embedded around the fuselage help scramble infrared missile guidance systems and hostile radar. Not to mention the fact Air Force One routinely ferries the infamous nuclear football around. This briefcase holds the necessary codes for launching an intercontinental atomic strike. How's that for carry-on weaponry? All this tech comes at a mind-blowing cost. According to an Obama-era Freedom of Information request, Air Force One costs the American taxpayer some $206,337 for every hour it's up in the air. The fuel alone sets Uncle Sam back $80,000 an hour. But the symbolism and prestige of Air Force One is surely worth every penny. Just look at how much mileage movie makers get out of this iconic airborne American institution. It really is quite special. And of course, many, if not most, of the advanced avionics and defense systems aboard Air Force One are classified. But still, it's fun to speculate. Put it this way, in at least four of the many movies set on Air Force One, the president uses a private one-seater escape pod. To be clear, the real-life Secret Service flatly denies such an escape pod exists. But then they would say that, wouldn't they? <laughs>